ladies in the crowd, uh, don't worry about it. Uh, we're working on the male demon hunter right now. We're trying to make him equally as attractive. Thanks, Kristen. Um, so she hit the ranged archetype, obviously. Uh, we also really wanted to have a character that's a much darker vibe because, like Christian said, we've got a holy monk, you've got the kind of flamboyant witch doc or, uh, or wizards. Um, so yeah, we wanted a dark character and honestly she just looked plain cool at this point. So we take this, uh, take this concept and it's time for us to start asking ourselves, well, how do you gear this character up? You know, we've, we've had a character who's got a cowl. Well, how do you upgrade a cowl? We, we got to start thinking about how those caps work. Um, and we also start thinking about what makes the character visually distinct from the rest of the, the classes. So the character team keyed in on, on three big things with this character. Number one, the character has a scarf. Uh, when you are running with a demon hunter, you know, out of the corner of your eye, you might see that character that's, that's just a little ways away from the, uh, the crowd. She's got that flowing cloth. Right away, you know that the demon hunter's there. Uh, you're also going to see, from game cam, you're being able to see this character's legs, unlike the, uh, you know, the wizard and the monk. Uh, and also, we keyed into this arm guard, which kind of helps her silhouette pop a little bit more. So what we do is, uh, the very first thing we do on the modeling side is we go ahead and create what we call a naked look for the Demon Hunter. Uh, we do this with all our classes. This is the look that it's basically before you've done any gearing up. Uh, we put this together and we hand it on to animation, uh, and in this case, Non went ahead and he came up with a bunch of poses that he thought really captured the attitude of the character. And the cool thing, at least for the t inside the team, is that this is the first time you see a character that, that you get it. Like, you see it and you're like, okay, I get the attitude of this character. She's kind of pissed off, you know, she's angry. She's just got a lot of attitude. So based on that, we go ahead and we build up kind of a geared up version of her. Uh, and again, we're really uh, conscious of things like her silhouette. We want her to read really quick. We want to really reinforce the attitude. Uh, and most importantly in Diablo is, at, at least from the modeling standpoint, is this talk of readability. So a character like this, she's very strappy. She's kind of gadgety. You know, you can see there's actually a lot of stuff going on, but when you zoom out to, you know, 30 feet above her head or so, you want to be able to see that stuff and, and read the characters. So we group together colors and values and that sort of thing. So uh, at this point, we've got a model that we're happy with, and the animators are going to go ahead and take that, and they're going to start filling, filling out her animation suite with all the cool things that a demon hunter does. And we go ahead and we start uh, putting together some of her tools. So like the, uh, the demon hunter in this case, obviously she's going to use bows and crossbows. Uh, if you guys go play her uh, out on the show floor today, you're going to see she's also the only character who can dual wield uh, pistol crossbows. So as I say, we've passed it on at this point to animation. Yeah, and you can kind of sort of see the, the fruits of everybody's labor. We've got a character that they've really taken advantage of her kind of pose-to-pose -pose action. You know, uh, pulling a trigger is probably not as exciting as swinging an axe or a sword, but they really reinforce her character by just the full body pose she takes when she shoots stuff, and also taking advantage of, of her skills. And I'm gonna leave it for Wyatt and Julian to get into the skills, because she just does some really cool stuff. Um, and with that, uh, that's it for me. I'm gonna pass it on to Leonard. Thanks. Thanks, Paul. I'm Leonard Borowski. I'm the lead world designer on Diablo 3. And I'm going to take you through the lore behind the Demon Hunter um, and really talk about her background. Um, the Demon Hunter is our most diverse class. What does that mean? She's not um, one type of person or she doesn't come from one social class. She could really come from uh, any walk of life. Um, demon hunters are chosen, they're not born into their class like all of our other classes are. Uh, this clicker doesn't work very well. They're bound together by their thirst for revenge, uh, revenge on demons who have slaughtered their family and friends. Um, the demon hunters uh, are recruited by other demon hunters 
after they've had these encounters with, um, with demons that would crush lesser people. Like I said, they aren't born, they're made. Like I said, they're recruited. Um, they don't have a homeland per se. They're, they're nomadic, they're always chasing down demons. They really want to crush demons, that's their, that's their reason for living. Um, they do have a, a base up in the uh, borderlands up north where they train new recruits though. If you take the best aspects of a ranger and a bounty hunter class and combine it with an epic class and combine it with an epic revenge quest, you end up with a really excellent, challenging class to play. And on top of that, they dual wield crossbows. I mean, what more do you need than that? We need new batteries is what we need, actually. Uh, so what drives the Demon Hunter? Uh, the Demon Hunter is our obsessed hero. Um, she'll do whatever it takes to hunt down demons and eradicate them from the world of Sanctuary. Um, what, when you saw what Christian was talking about, um, we took her partially into like the demon world, and we really wanted to show that she dabbles in the dark side. She's not afraid to get her hands dirty, so to speak. Um, so we didn't want her to seem demonic. So we didn't want to like really go into having her have demonic parts or the demon arm or anything like that. So what we did is we pulled back on that and we gave her the glowing eyes to kind of show that she's probably been messing in areas that maybe or maybe she shouldn't have been, but just to really show that she's totally obsessed and that she'll do whatever it takes to get rid of demons. And she's a stalker of demons. She uses her traps and gadgets and um, lies and waits for demons. She really wants to strike terror into their hearts. She wants demons to feel what they usually cause in human beings. She wants them to know the terror of being stalked. And finally, she realizes the true stakes of what's going on. All the other classes have their own reasons for doing what they're doing. The uh, witch doctor and the monk are in it for their religious ideals. The wizard is in it for personal gain. The barbarian is in it for his, uh, his people. But the uh, demon hunter is in it for one thing and one thing only, and that's for killing demons. She understands the true stakes of the eternal conflict between, between the high heavens and the burning hells, and she's gonna do whatever it takes to make sure that hell doesn't get a foothold in sanctuary. Hi everyone, my name is Wyatt Chang and I work as a technical game designer. Now we've established that the Demon Hunter, primarily about ranged, shadow, gadgets and traps, we need some skills that kind of bring that to life. We want skills that sell those three concepts. So the first skill we're going to talk about today is called Bola Shot. Bola Shot sells two themes really well, ranged and gadgets. You can kind of see the way she runs around, she shoots out a bola, the bola wraps itself around the target and explodes. I really like this skill in the sense that it feels really tactical. That delay is kind of a drawback, but it's also something you can use to your advantage in the right situations. You're going to see a theme in all the skills that we talk about today. We always want to try and push the core concepts, the range, the gadgets, and the shadow. The next skill we're going to talk about today is Vault. Vault's a movement skill. Obviously, the Barbarian has Leap Attack, and the uh, the wizard has teleport, and we wanted to make sure that all of our classes have a way to get around the battlefield. In this case, we wanted to sell the shadow theme. Initially, we kind of talked about things like shadow vault and stuff like that, because we said, oh, well, we have to have a shadow theme. But at this time, we were like, you know what, let's just call it vault and let the art speak for itself. You know, there's no need to have to weave these concepts into every single skill. So we have a, this, the, the, the artistic representation has some acrobatics to it, has some shadow themes to it. It's basically a way to take uh, a solid mechanic, wrap it up with the aesthetic that we're trying to sell, and deliver something that we think will be fun for the players. The next skill is Spike Trap. As we talked about, one of her themes is also going to be traps and gadgets. This is uh, not unlike some of the assassin gameplay that you might have seen in Diablo 2. In this case, we want to sell again the shadow theme and the gadgets theme. You know, we just take an ordinary trap spell, weave in some shadow themes in the art, kind of brings out the flavor, it differentiates her from the other characters. 
Another thing I really like about Spike Trap is it has that sense of preparation, you know, because we want players to know the Demon Hunter is somebody who goes to sleep at night and dreams about killing demons. She wakes up in the middle of the night and says, oh, you know, I, got, I, I, I have this great idea for a trap that'll be awesome for killing demons. And she bakes it and she goes back to sleep and she wakes up and she, you know, kills a lot of demons. That's, that's her thing. Also selling the idea of ranged attacks is grenades. I love this skill also in our, in our game because it's showing off that we have a 3D engine. And so you can actually bounce the grenades off of the walls, off of the floors. I think it'll be an awesome way for players to try to come up with some creative uses for the grenades, throwing them around corners. It actually bounces around and it shows, um, again, it sells the, the Demon Hunter's themes, ranged attacks, gadgetry, preparation, planning. This is, this is premeditated demon killing going on. And finally, I want to show you guys multi-shot. Uh, multi-shot, some of you guys might remember from D2, but it's been amped up and brought to the next level for Diablo 3. We know multi-shot was a hugely popular skill in Diablo 2, so we wanted to make sure that we get the clicker going. There we go. We want, we want to bring back that mechanic that we know, the skill people love, but artify it up for something more appropriate. Hey everyone, my name is Kevin. I'm going to be your content designer today. So uh, on the second half of the show, we have a lot of new and improved skills and skill systems and other character things to show you. On the new side, we're going to show you a, a complete overhaul of the uh, skill system itself, um, a launch of new class skills for each of the classes, a new trait system, and the introduction of the ever-elusive talisman. So let's get right to it. We have a lot to cover. All right, so skill UI. So when you have a bunch of cool skills like what Wyatt was showing you, um, the next thing we need to work on is to make them deep and replayable and uh, to make it accessible. And on that end, let's break down the, the skill UI from last year and talk about some of the problems we had with it. So this is the one we had last year, and it was, it was just big. All the choices were there at once. You could see the whole tree, which was a good thing but it covered your character. Um, it encouraged people to spend their skills, uh, skill points too widely and experienced Diablo players know you want to choose fewer skills and spend more deeply into them. Um, it, it had these three different class lines which were a little bit arbitrary and, and um, we learned that a little bit later. So we took this and we said, okay, how can we make this all more accessible without losing any of the depth? So we went to a tab system. So this was an improvement. In, in a major way, um, it made everything bigger. You could see it all easier. It compartmentalized it into the tabs. But uh, with all these skill lines, honestly, um, fitting them all in there to be equal across the tabs, some of the skills were a little bit arbitrary. You still couldn't see all your options at once. You had to skip back and forth between the tabs. Uh, and people often, when they're leveling up, actually forgot to check on the other tabs and ended up spending more points in whichever tab they first chose to spend points in. So we went to a list approach. So this we were getting a little bit closer on. On the left hand side, we had all seven of your skills uh, in one place. So this was a major improvement for us. You could see your entire sort of character build all in one place. And on the right, when you were choosing new skills, it was getting better. You could see everything bigger. You could see what you could choose next. And you could start thinking ahead by scrolling down the list. But it wasn't quite good enough. So here's the current UI. So the, we kept everything with the seven skills on the left. And on the right-hand side, uh, we made that whole window a lot bigger, so you could still plan ahead, but you could see all, all your choices available at one time, making the entire skill UI a lot more accessible, and at a glance, you could see what you could spend. But let's take a look at this in action. All right, so this became very straightforward, and again, this, this sort of UI idea that at a glance you know what to do. You look on your left and you can choose a new skill or spend points in your old skills. So this was good. Let's spend some points and get a new skill. Okay, and so choosing a new skill, very straightforward, and uh, upgrading them is also a lot easier. Frankly, if you see a, a blinking plus sign, that means you can spend points in it. If there's no plus sign, that means you've maxed it out. Now, a little extra insight into the seven skills. At the beginning of the game, every skill that you choose has five skill points you can put into it, but throughout the course of the game, you have ways to deepen that and augment the skills so that you can spend more points into them. 
So initially, you know, it's, it's much easier to make builds. Um, it's easier to think ahead. It's easier to respec when you want to do that as well. And you can try a lot of things very rapidly. But there's a lot more to the skill system than just this. So a little bit earlier on, uh, you showed me some of the Demon Hunter skills that we're excited about.